And we're gonna sew a hobbit outfit! Oh, okay, just give me one second. That's gonna have to be good enough. In this house, we craft in pajamas and without hair and makeup done. So, this is my plan. Got this pattern, Simplicity 3809. And we're gonna be doing something similar to this. I've got the chemise, like the underdress thingy. This is gonna be the bodice. This will be the skirt. And probably like a little apron, because I like this like edge. Pretty, pretty. My thought is that I am gonna try and add more texture to a cosplay, and that's kind of where this is coming in, because like this is textured, this is like a print, this is like not just flat cotton, it's like a outdoorsy thing. All of the materials were thrifted, except for the bias tape, which I could have made my own bias tape, but you guys, you know what? Didn't feel like it, so I just grabbed this one. And then for like a little headband, some flowers. Yeah, it's gonna be cute. Like, let's just get going. Let's do this. So like I said, the pattern that I'll be using is Simplicity 3809. I flip it over and do the mathy math to figure out what size I'll be cutting out, and then I just start going ham, cutting everything out that I need. Here's the fabric that I've decided to use. Fun fact about this fabric, it is a thrifted tablecloth that I got from the thrift store, and um, I'm a big dummy and didn't wash it before I started cutting it up and sewing it together. Um, huge mistake because there was definitely still dried crusty food on it, so um, eventually I did clean it off, but in true Hobbit fashion, I mean, they like food, right? Here I am reading all of the instructions, only to decide that I don't need any instructions and I'm gonna do whatever I want anyways. Plus, once you've already used a pattern a couple of times, you kinda just get it stuck in your head, like how the pieces fit together and how it all's gonna work anyways. And this is not my first rodeo, folks. No! <laughs> Nay! Uh, I built this pattern, like, I don't know, a couple of years ago, and I remember it being, like, semi-decent, so that's why I decided to use it with this one. And now we're gonna sew really quickly all the pieces together. This, uh, is not even sped up. I actually just sew this fast. Wouldn't that be great? Ironing your seams is one of the things that I always do. I find my garments turn out much crispier and just like better. They match up and they're just nicer when you iron them all together. Time to lay everything together. First up I have the outer fabric on the very bottom and then I did end up throwing a lining in there. I can't quite remember why I did that. Maybe just to add a little bit more like structure and bulk. And then the inside lining which is made out of like some fabric that I just had in my stash left over left over from other projects. Don't ask any questions, I won't explain. I carefully pin all of the layers together in preparation to sew them all together because, I mean, we have to assemble the vesti bodice garment thing at some time. It might as well be right now. I recommend using the fastest, most accurate sewing machine you have access to to sew all the way around the perimeter, but leave the bottom part open because that's going to be crucial. We're going to be like inserting some plastic boning up through the bottom portion of the bodice to give it like that structure. Um, ooh, aesthetic slow shot of sewing stuff. Very nice, very nice. Don't get tired of that. Oh, go! there's more! <laughs> and it goes faster! But let's get real, this is a sewing video, you knew what you were getting yourself into. Here I am sewing some channels, and here I am just trimming off the excess fabric because like I don't need all of this chunky edge stuff. Um, these are my bones, they are just zip ties. You are not special if you're using zip ties, it's all over the internet, everyone does it now. They're just cheap and effective. In ya go! And then we're gonna do that process over for every single bone we insert into the channels. Time to pick some trimmy ribbon. Which one? Which one? Oh, it's gonna be the gold one! It took a while for me to decide how I wanted that to go, but ultimately I just went with it down the front and then around the perimeter. But we've not got there yet. We've got to attach the little peplum floaty things on the waist section of the vest thingy. Those are the accurate terms. I pretty much just pinned it and then absolutely munched it with my serger. In a good way. Bias tape time. This is when you can really start to see everything come, come, mm -hmm, come together. And then I just hand stitch the outside top part. Or was this the inside bottom part? Doesn't matter anyways. Don't tell anyone, but I ended up just hot gluing this trim all the way around the outside. I did not want to sew it. Last night I finished the vest. 
oh, and that's a big old lie because I had not yet attached all of the hardware that I was going to put down, like the grommets and everything, but we'll get to that. And this is it. Is it too fancy for a Hobbit cosplay? Eh, it's a little fancy. Just, I added all the gold on the side of it, uh, and I think it looks great. Um, maybe a little fancy. But you know what? Hobbits like to party, and so that's what we're going with. I guess I'll just keep going now. And then the giant floor gremlin part of me came out in full force, and I decided to cut everything out on the carpet like a monster. I did use a pattern, but I made it like extra wide to give it more volume, and you'll see why later. I wanted this chemise to be very hobbity, very medieval, like fantasy, but I also wanted it to be reminiscent of the grandpa in the original Willy Wonka and the Charlie factory, the chocolate factory, oh girl, um, but where it's just like oversized and baggy um, because eventually I want to make like a Scrooge McDuck style costume out of it just for funsies like with a little hat and everything uh, but cut all the pieces out the sleeves will be giant billowy messes which is like my vision so bring that on Making the chemise is literally the simplest process. You literally just have front and your back and then your two sleeves. You sew everything together, you slap it on there, uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, the most complicated thing in my personal opinion is when you sew the elastic casings around the neck and the sleeves. And once you've mastered that, you will never struggle with it again because it's like really, really simple. It's just a learning process that I'm not going to explain here. Sorry. And I know I just said elastic casings um, because that's what my heart wanted to say in the moment, but in reality, it's just like a regular casing. And I used ribbon instead of elastic because I wanted it to be more adjustable and I wanted to like be able to wear it like on my shoulders and off my shoulders and look how adorable it is. Twirl, twirl. No time to spare, I immediately went back to the floor to continue cutting, and this time it's the skirt. Did I use a pattern? Yes, for the first bit. And then I just was like, you know what, it's the same trapezoid thing over and over and over again. I'm just gonna, you know, trace it a little bit with my scissors on the carpet. Again, like an idiot monster. Who does this? We all do this. Let's get real. Now is the perfect time to insert a pocket if you plan on hiding snacks in your costume. And then I just zip surged them together and then sewed zip a zipper. Zip. Oh god, I've got to stop it. No, I really just need sleep. Matched my two sides together. There's that floppy pocket that's going to come in crazy good handy for when I want to like store trinkets and fruit snacks. And then it was time to hem it or like, you know, do the hem. With a skirt like this, I typically let it hang for about 24 hours just to kind of get all the bias wiggle out of it. And then this is my preferred method of chopping the hem down is like on a body. I find it works the best for me. And then I just quickly hemmed it together, which you'll never get to see because the fabric was in the way. Remember how I said I hadn't yet put the hardware on the bodice? Well, here you go. I'm so good at it. I'm going to show you the process I used to make the apron part of this cosplay, but unfortunately you won't get to see anything more of it because I forgot to bring it when we filmed and shot photos of the costume. So even I don't really know what the costume looks like all put together. And I really, really am bummed about it because this apron is adorable. It's just dainty and perfect, and then I just forgot it. No sense in dwelling on the past, let's make a flower crown. The process for making a flower crown is just the same always, just glue, flower, glue, flower, glue, 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 flower, 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 glue, flower, more glue. You're welcome. Finally getting to try everything on somewhat together was really exciting and I was really looking forward to this moment. I got everything laced up on the bodice, the chemise actually fit, which in the past I've had problems with like the arm size, um, but this one worked really, really well and it's really cute and I'm pretty proud about it. Getting the skirt on is tricky because the zipper ended up being, you know, really long, but check out that twirl factor. Are you even kidding me right now? Like, send me to a Ren Fair stat. Like and subscribe for more chaos crafting content. And head over to my Instagram for daily updates at Alexandra Lane. And after all that, I think it's a good time to go have a snack or like some potatoes because, you know, hobbits.